Now, the FCCPC said Google's new policy to ban loan apps from accessing user contact and photos is one of the success stories of the Commission's partnership with Google as it continues to sanitize the digital lending space in Nigeria. However, Ngozi Doji, the co-founder of Carbon, one of the licensed digital lenders in Nigeria, said denying loan apps access to their customers' contact and photos will affect the business negatively. Now, something Akin Taro Tech Analyst at Nyometrics joins me now on this discussion. Thanks for joining me, Samson. Thank you for having me. Good morning. It is indeed my pleasure. Uh, first off, now, how do you react to this tightened regulations of Google by cutting off access to sensitive data, including users' contact, photos, and location? Yeah, thank you. I, I think it's, it's a good development because there has been a lot of abuses. You know, these loan apps, they have been abusing the contacts, the access that they have to their customers' data, which is the contact and the photo. You see situations where someone just sent you a, a random message on WhatsApp and saying, so, so person is your friend, is going, and you have to please help us compare this person to O. In fact, you'll be surprised. It's probably somebody you've not even spoken to in years. And then they put the person's picture as well. So, and this is because before you can borrow from these loan apps, you have to give them the permission to access your contact, to access your photos. So, and I think they are using this as, as you may be aware, most of these loans are, are without collateral. So, they are using these assets as, as a collateral. So, and there has been a lot of abuses. There have been a lot of abuses here and there. So I think banning them from assessing this is, 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 is a good development and uh, it will right. help, in, it help uh, the FCCPs in what they are trying to do in sanitizing the industry. All right, now, Samson, uh, to operate as a personal loan app in Nigeria, it is mandatory for digital money lenders to comply with the limited interim regulatory and registration framework and guidelines for digital lending now of 2022 set by the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection. Do you see this development uh, as Herculean or what um, the FCCPC is asking and now what Google is also saying? Yeah, I think what the FCCPC is asking is a simple thing. They are saying, come, tell, show us your business. Let us know who you are. And then let us come and register with us. Give us your address. Tell us, let's know how you operate your business. You know, before now, a lot of these uh, loan apps have been operating. Anybody can just wake up one day and then, and then create an app and start, and start giving out loans. Of course, I know some of them are registered by the CBN. But a lot of them are not registered. And then because due to lack of uh, regulation or lack of registration, you see a situation where anybody can just wake up one day, design an app, then maybe ask a little change, then say you are a loan app, then you start issuing loans. Then, and that is where you see the issue of um, unethical practices. That is where they come in because you are not registered. You are nobody is monitoring you. You can do as you like. You can do anything. You see a situation where you will see a loan app displaying uh, an obituary of a customer just because the person has not paid or the person is defaulting. So it is only someone that is not monitored, that is not registered, that can do that. So if the FCCPC is saying, okay, come, let us know who you are, tell us how you operate, show us your address and all that. So I think it's, a, it's, it's quite a very simple thing. If you are not going to, you want to be a legal entity, then you should be, you should be willing to be regulated. You should be willing to register with the with the regulator, and, uh, and, it, and I think it's also a good development for the, for the genuine digital lenders because it shows that, okay, these people that are registered, they are registered by the government, and then even the borrowers can also have rest of mind that, okay, this company is registered. So before now, people lump all of them together, the registered, the unregistered, the legal ones, the illegal ones. So, but now people can see, okay, this person I'm dealing with is registered. If this person misbehaves, yes, I can complain to FCCPC and they can hold them accountable. So that's where I say. All right, now, so Samson, with this uh, recent development now, with uh, this uh, regulation or uh, added regulation, as it were, so uh, what should borrowers expect now going forward from these um, loan app um, operators? Okay, yeah, I think what we are likely going to see now is that you will see 
You know, this loan, uh, they pride themselves as providing peak loans, instant loans. Some we say, under one hour, you get your loan. But with this new policy, of course, they do that. They were doing that before because they have access to their phone, they have access to their contact. Even they may not even do any verification before issuing the loans, but they know that we have a way to track this person. But uh, with this new policy, it means that they are still going to... Is the, the process, the process of issuing loans to the borrowers will be, will be reduced to be because the companies, the digital lenders, we have to take their time to try and see if this person can pay. Usually, through the contact, they try to look at the contact of the person and see, okay, can this person pay? Is that somebody that we can go to if this person is owing? But if you are denying them that access now, they will now start to look at, okay, let's find another way to see. Maybe let's check, maybe through BVN. Let's see if this person has a account. Or if this person, they have to take their time to verify. Maybe this person, is he working? Who is he to identify another? So we are, we are going to see a slower process than before. But I think it's good for everybody, even the borrowers and the, and the digital lenders. Okay, now some experts are saying right now that this uh, recent development uh, will lead to an increase in non-performing loans for lenders. Uh, do you really agree with this uh, postulation? Yes, yes, that is that is bound to happen. Even in banks, the the established and the traditional banks, you have a lot of uh, non-performing loans, and there's every year it keeps increasing. Despite the CBN regulation and despite the the bank's policy of not giving out loans to people without collateral and all that, but with for the digital lenders, it, they, we also need to find a way of identifying their customers before releasing the money. Of course, without the access to their contact, you know, some people, this is Nigeria, even, even among friends, you have people that want to borrow from you, they will borrow from you and then they don't have intention of paying back. So, and even for the loan apps, you see a lot of people, people, Nigerians have also bastardized it they, because they say, okay, these people are here and then in some cases, you see the loan apps running after people say, come and take loan, come and take loan. So, someone that doesn't need the money will take the money, take the loan and then maybe blow it on something that, that cannot even yield any returns. And then at the end of the day, you find out that the person cannot repay. So we are going to see an increase in non-performing loans for, for the digital lenders. There's no doubt about that. But I think they will also, at this point, I think what they will need to do, they will also need to reduce the way they run after people, the way they beg people to come and take loans. So I think that should also reduce. Okay, Samson, I'm even um, concerned really about the process of um, verifying borrower's identity because all of this, uh, you know, um, um, options uh, being done by the, uh, these uh, loan apps is basically to uh, fulfill all KYC, you know, requirements as by knowing their customers and all of that. Are there other preferable alternatives that they can use uh, for KYC measure? Yes, you know, if, if you ask a borrower to submit NIN or maybe or even through BVN, BVN is one sure way that they can use. You know, before now they don't use. Of course, if it were to be a bank, you get all that. But for most of most of these illegal loan apps, they don't do that. All they know is that once you can give us access to your phone, uh, to your contact, to your pictures, you can't run away. Would, and that is because they are ready. They know they are ready to blackmail you if you don't pay them. So, but of course, if you have BVN, if someone is not paying, there's a way they can, you know, when you have someone's BVN, you have the, old, the, the BVN has the entire biometrics of the person, the picture, the, the data, everything about the person. And they can also, if you are a legal digital lender, there's a way they can also report a BVN that is owing them, that is defaulting, that they can, there's a way they can blacklist such BVN, such that the person will not be able to borrow money anywhere, even from the traditional banks. So I think they can, they can always use the BVN to, uh, to actually identify their customers. All right. But something the main concern right now will be the federal government's uh, financial inclusion policy now. Some loan app operators are saying that the policy will favor banks, as in the traditional banks, at the expense of um, fintechs that are driving this financial inclusion that we have been talking about. And they're admitting that some of the loan apps have been abusing access to their customers' data. I get that. But with all of this now, don't you think that it will be uh, favoring the uh, you know, deposit money banks and uh, to the detriment of um, these um, fintechs? I, I don't think so, because... You know, if the digital lenders do the right thing, 
of course, they will still have their customers, and it, it will also help them because they will not have genuine people. It's not people that just want to collect money. You know, in Nigeria, some people don't even care. Okay, so it's my account, it's my contact that you want. Some will even go and take the loan, buy a new phone. They make sure that, okay, the, no, the contact that they have, they are even irrelevant contact, contact. So that even when you contact such person, they make sure that even their pictures, they don't have it on that phone. So this, to me, it depends on the way the digital lenders handle this. I, I don't see, they can still continue to run their business in, 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 in an ethical way, and then it will favor them. It's not, I don't see it as benefiting the bank, because for the banks, for you to borrow money at the banks, you have to provide which collateral that which many people don't have. And this is one reason why many people are going to the, to the loan apps. So, and people will continue to go to them, genuine people, people that are willing to pay back. This, this, yeah, with this current situation now, the digital lenders will also be very careful about who they give money to. And it's also for their own benefit because it's also good for them. So I don't see it as something favoring the bank because not everybody can go to the bank to go and get loans. Not everybody can afford the collateral that the bank demand for. And even the banks are not really looking at uh, all these small, small people to, to give money to. They are, they are looking at the big businesses, people that can give them huge returns. So that was the banks that. So the, the retail market, the mass market is still there for the, for the digital lenders. So that's my take on it. All right, uh, Samson, as we round off on this um, session, now let's just um, talk generally about the fintech uh, you know, sector, you know, because uh, you will agree with me that it is actually driving the economy uh, this time around. Nigeria is really trying to penetrate so deeply. Uh, with all of this regulation, aside from the loan apps, uh, generally speaking now for the fintech ecosystem, do you really think that uh, it is overly regulated in Nigeria, the fintech sector? Uh, you know, the fintech sector is just growing. And, uh, you know, one thing about technology is that technology is always ahead while regulation follows. The regulators are just finding a way to now regulate fintech. The fintech, and then that, and that is normal. That happens in every country. You see people, people innovate first, and then when the innovation has become acceptable and it's addressing the solution, that is when the regulator will now start looking at, okay, this thing, how can we regulate it? How can we make sure that they don't misuse it. So I don't think fintech is overregulated in Nigeria. Of course, we have the CBA regulating the fintech, and now the FCCPC doing that for the digital lenders and a host of others. So I, I don't think they are being overregulated because, in, in a way, everybody is trying to ensure that the regulation will also ensure that they also survive as a business. And I, just as you are coming up with innovation, you are also complying with the with, with the rules, with the with the laws of the land. So I think regulation is very, very, very important. Just you can see with the with, with AI now, a lot of people are already calling for regulation of the artificial intelligence because the way it's going, they know that if it's not regulated, things may go out of hand. Because innovation has both its good and bad side. So for you to prevent the bad side, there must be regulation to caution, to moderate everything. So and I think that was happening in Nigeria. I don't see uh, I don't see over regulation yet. Thank you so much, M. Sam, for joining us on Business Insights. Thanks for all of the useful insight that you have brought on this discourse for today. Uh, Sam McIntyre is uh, the tech expert at Naira Metics. We do appreciate your time. All right, you're still watching uh, Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll be moving on next uh, to the aviation sector in a moment to join us again. <laughs>